Today we're going to be taking a look at the Invicta 1953. It is the latest and greatest from Invicta, which is a weird thing to say, but it's getting a lot of play online. It seems like it's good value for only around the $100 mark, and let's see what it's all about. Starting off with some dimensions for this watch. You have a diameter of about 40 millimeters, a lug to lug of 48.8, so about 49, a thickness of 13.8, so about 14, and a lug width of 20 millimeters. Some specifications for this watch, we have a 200 meter water resistance with screw down crown, a Seiko NH35 movement in the back there, uh, see-through case back, we got mineral crystal on the front and the back, 120 click bezel, uh, as I said this is the NH35 so we do have a ghost wheel position, it's not an actual true no date movement. And of course, as with most of Invicta's most popular designs, this is based off a Rolex. Here we have a vintage Rolex. It is going to be a Rolex that was kind of like a pre-Submariner. It was turnograph with the bezel, the same exact hand, same exact layout. Uh, I'll include a picture to the side there so you can kind of just see the similarities. And I believe the reference is 6202. And if that's wrong, I'll correct it again somewhere to the side. So starting with the dial, we have overall a very nice dial because, well, Invicta didn't come up with it. <laughs> but the way that it's executed is done well. We have a very simple layout with just Invicta at the top, 1953 and automatic. 1953 is a little nod to the fact that it is a homage because 1953 was the year that the Rolex Turnograph I mentioned came out. We have the baton style hands, the second hand with the lollipop at the very end. Uh, as you can see, it's done in this kind of gilt coloration, similar to something like a Black Bay 58. I like the tone of gilt that they went with. I'm not usually a big gold or goldish colored guy, so the way that they did it, I actually do enjoy it. The fact that they went with the greenish coloration for the loom, I don't love because it kind of distracts away from how good the gilt looks, I think. If they would have gone for a white closer to the fill inside of these hands here, I think it would have looked a lot better. But that is a little bit nitpicky, and again, this isn't the most expensive watch in the world, but that is a refinement that they definitely could have taken. Overall, it's a simple dial, well executed, and it's pretty nice. Let's go zoomed in on the dial. You can tell that it's not a flat black. It has this kind of black eggshell texturing, which is really nice overall. It lends to a black that obviously you can't really tell that it's eggshell looking at it on the wrist but it just does add some visual interest some imperceivable depth to the watch in a way you see there are the invicta logo nicely lettered nicely done not really any perf imperfection there baton hands nicely made no real fuzziness to those hands or anything the actual tone of this kind of gilt coloring is actually very nice very pleasing overall it's kind of hard to make it show through the camera but these loom pips have like a slight green tint to them you can kind of see it best there it isn't the most pleasing of color choices i would have preferred if they would have done something like a white loom infill it, i think it just would have looked better a little more cohesive but the fact that they have the matching gilt surrounds on every single marker the bulbous quality of the loom fill itself it does overall make a pretty nice package. Moving on to the case, I think Invicta did a pretty good job here. We see we have this radially brushed uh, lug tops followed by this kind of nice chamfer and again, brushing on the sides, but this time horizontally. Nice signed crown there, a good knurling on the crown. They've foregone crown guards which not only is faithful to the original design but i think just helps with the vintage aesthetic works with the gilt coloring works with just the whole vibe of this watch really on the side profile the lugs do curve down a lot coming either to the case back or just below it so the watch does wear relatively close to the wrist relatively well on the wrist it's not a great lug to lug distance so again it does plant itself nicely the only concern I really have about this case is it's a little, I guess, pudgy is the word I would use. It's kind of thick at the beginning of the lugs and it doesn't really thin out too much. 
if they would have found a way to just kind of slim the case just from the top, the just visual footprint of the case, I think it would have been a lot better. But for the price that we're talking around $100, you really can't go that wrong. You have a nice three leak style bracelet with a female end link, which I love. Helps it just wear better on the wrist. Decent brushing on the top. Bracelet construction, nothing that's gonna blow you away. We have hollow end links. We have just regular screw pins. And as you can kind of see right there, the link itself has actually almost broken a little bit, kind of gone off to the right, exposing some of that uh, pin in the middle. It's just the quality of the bracelet. They're not expensive links. They're not, you know, well made necessarily, but it does the job and then, hey, it still works. Clasp is nothing special, just a regular stamp. We do have a two button closure, which both parts feel very, very secure overall. Uh, so nothing to complain with there. We have a nicely engraved Invicta logo on the clasp. I'm glad they kept this off the dial again. It just looks cleaner, but it's nice that they kept it on the clasp. Four little holes of micro adjustment there. And then we just got that Seiko movement beaten in there with all its prettiness or really lack of prettiness. But hey, it's reliable. Mine's running at about five seconds a day, so really can't complain there. So moving on to how this watch wears. Earlier today, I was wearing my Visitor Veil vale Park Officer. So here we have the Invicta on my 6.5 inch wrist. As you can see, the lug to lug length is pretty uh, short, so it does well wear within the bounds of my wrists. It doesn't look overly large. I would say it does look fairly proportional overall. At 40 millimeters, it really is kind of just a crowd pleaser size. The relative ratio of all the dial elements, the logo, the amount of text, the size of the loom pips and everything, it's just very well proportioned. And overall, I think it does look good on the wrist. Again, just a little tiny bit of heft at the lug sides here which I would have liked to see toned down a little bit, you know, refine the case shape a little bit more. But overall, still very nicely wearing that female lug end right there, really making sure the bracelet tapers around the wrist properly. And as you can see there, it really does kind of just conform to the wrist pretty well. The case back is a little high, so it does wear a little proud sometimes, but no complaints about the way it wears. It feels good. Even though the bracelet's not the highest quality once it's on the wrist, I think not only does the package come together pretty well, but it just does, it completes the look, it really does. The clasp isn't too bad once it's actually closed because it does close very securely. One thing I forgot to mention in the whole case section was the bezel. Again, 120 click, very, very defined click on here. Let me see, I'm sure you can probably hear that clicking through. There is almost, no play at all on this bezel, which is actually really nice. This is pretty much more well constructed than bezels I've tried in 500 and even thousand dollar watches. The only problem, which is pretty much the bane of most dive watches existence, is that it does not line up with the loom pip properly. But I'm sure if you really wanted, you can MacGyver it some way to make it fit properly. But hey, it's a hundred dollars. It's not going to kill you. Moving on to a loom comparison, I'm going to have the Visitor with BGW9 here on the right, the Timex with Indigo on the left, and the Invicta with whatever unnamed compound that they're using in the middle. So as you can see, just comparing the Invicta to the Visitor on first glance, the Invicta is dying off a little easier. It is a little less bright as, as compared to the BGW9 on the Visitor here. Of course, we have a green color temperature versus a blue color temperature. But overall, I would say the loom is actually not too bad on the Invicta. It's pretty much fully loomed. You even have a loom in the bezel here to, you know, have orientation and time. So it's not going to last all night, but it's going to last a little while and it's going to glow pretty legibly. Now comparing it to the Timex, again, the Timex is a slight amount brighter doesn't really diminish the fact that the Invicta has a pretty good signature, pretty good glow, and it's going to last you. They didn't skimp too much on the loom here, which it's nice to see. So pros and cons of this watch. Basically, a pro is the size and styling. 
it is the right size at 40 millimeters. They didn't go too long with the lugs. They didn't mess up with the bracelet. The gilt dial is very popular right now. People can't get the Black Bay 58. People <laughs> can't get the Rolex that this was inspired by. So this is a fairly good option and it did fill a void in the market for it being so affordable. Price is another great thing, the fact that it's only $100. The fact that they kept the Invicta branding off both the case and the dial itself, genius move. It looks a lot better, looks a lot cleaner, and it makes it something that people don't have to hate on as much. You know, it's great that you're getting the Seiko NH35 movement in here. It is reliable, it's accurate, mine's running at plus five seconds a day. And the fact that you're getting all this for $100 when you see micro brands charging two, three, four hundred dollars for the same movement is pretty cool. And overall, I personally just love the fact that it's a no date. It makes it a lot cleaner. It shows almost that they were actually looking at it from a design standpoint and just instead of just a put it out there standpoint. Yes, the original was also a no date, but it's nice that they kept it on, on that same vein. We on to some cons. One of the biggest cons for me is the fact that they used the green loom on all the pips. I don't know if I outright mentioned it before, but the actual hands of the watch are a kind of more whitish tone of loom, uh, at least when it's not loomed up, you know what I mean? And the fact that they have that white luminescence to be able to put on the watch that they didn't use for all the markers, it has this green leaning tint to it that I think detracts from the actual beauty of the gilt tone that they went with, it sucks a little bit. I mean, I would have even been fine with like a uh, aged tritium type look, even though I'm not really a fan of that aged loom. But I think on here it could have worked at least better than the green did. And other than that, I just think the case could have used some refining. It is nice that they did chamfering. It is nice that they have decent brushing on it but I feel like if they would have just thinned it out a little bit, both in probably the thickness and just the shape of the lugs itself, it would have been almost perfect. And just final thoughts, this is the best watch Invicta makes. Uh, of course, it's my opinion, but I think it's also the truth. It is a better package than the Pro Diver is. It arguably looks better than the Pro Diver. It is a little less homage than the Pro Diver because you don't see as many watches going along this kind of vintage homage route. Uh, yes, it's directly based off of a Rolex model, but it's not as a widespread of a copy or homage in that sense. It is well built. The bracelet's a little jangly, but once the very secure clasp is closed, it actually feels like a decent bracelet. Uh, Again, it looks pretty good, the size is right, the movement's good, the price is right, and you can see why people are kind of gravitating towards this watch. Yes, it's an Evicta, but who cares? If you like it, wear it. You're the only one wearing it, and it's a good watch. If someone is bashing it just because it's an Evicta, then they kind of don't have the full story. You have to see a watch, know a watch, and they'll argue, yes, you can get an Orient Mako for this price. You can get an Orient Ray. You can spend $100 more and get something like the 5KX or something like this. But although those are all great watches and they're all original designs, this is cheaper and well executed. And it gives someone the taste of a pretty much vintage watch slash Rolex slash Tudor vibe that Otherwise, they either could not afford or they don't want to spend that much money on. So at the end of the day, it's a great watch. I don't think you'll be disappointed as long as you can get over the whole loom coloration thing. And hope to see you in another video.